Next, let's scale up the system to create more content. We're going to do this in two ways. We're going to use a bigger map, and we're also going to use uh, a different set of uh, operations to create the buildings. So we're going to go back up and just do a wedge count of one, because we're only going to use one big map on this one, so that'll make life easier. And then we're going to go down to uh, create buildings, and we're going to generate node, save and continue, and it's going to pipe through that, and it's going to give us just some options here. So this is just the same sort of what we normally get with the generate. Now what we want to do is instead of the building we have here, uh, we're going to use a different one. And this one comes from a digital asset, something that already exists that we can import in and make use of. So the new building will have actual slabs and columns and have glass on the outside. So we're going to go and get this new digital asset, which is the make buildings to accept that uh, install. Then we can go into this network and instead of using the network we built to make the buildings, we're going to put down the make the make building to and feed that in. So it, we'll get the input. We'll, we'll bring in the input from above. So after the fuse, we'll bring that into the digital asset and then we'll pump that into the output. And actually we can put a switch node in there if we want to, just so that we can always switch back to the other kind if we want. And then that, there we go. So this new building type uh, and the building type right now, the height is not correct because it's not taking advantage of everything that we have. So we want to do the bait height and then the height variation. So this one actually has a different settings for picking up the different attributes and we can do height variation there as well. So if we put that in, then the building goes up to its proper height. And you see how there's columns and windows and, oh, and we're doing a floor height of two, which is what we had originally. And there we go. So that, that feeds into the system there. Now, the next thing we want to do is we're going to dirty this node and then we can, in that partition one, because we're not doing multiple ones, let's do the viewer uh, and turn off the render one so we can just view this in the viewport. We don't need to render this uh, just to test things out and see how we're doing. So it's going to go through and cook this and we'll be able to view in the viewport what this new cityscape looks like using this, this new building type. So there we go. It's looking pretty cool. That's using one of the maps we already have. Uh, we, of course, would want to scale up. Now, one thing that's important to understand about, about PDG, as these systems get more and more complex, uh, we're currently using the uh, scheduler that's tied to this computer that I'm working with. Uh, you could also use a scheduler that goes off to a farm, and the tasks could be sent off to the farm. So you can distribute the tasks as you get more and more of them. Uh, to take advantage of a cloud computing. So that's something worth considering. Uh, so the local scheduler only deals with my local computer. You can use a deadline scheduler if you want to go out to a wider, a wider situation. So we're going to go to this uh, here and we're going to change that to, let's go up one and do the large grid. So we're going to have a large, large grid there and we're going to change the size of it to 500 and Instead of randomizing this, we're going to delete channels and we're just going to position this explicitly. And we're going to go minus 90, sorry, 100, minus 90, 0, 100. And the, the width, we're going to make 60 so it blends out because it's a much bigger city. We want that to be noticeable. And we're going to get that. And if we click on that, there's the big map. And you can see that you've got the wedge, the city core wedge right in the corner of that park over there. So the system that we set up for a small system, for a small little city block, can apply to a bigger city block uh, easily. And this is one of the advantages of using a procedural system like this, is you have that ability of scaling up and just taking advantage of the work you've already done to apply to more complex systems. So once we do that, we're going to go into here and cook that so we can see the whole city looks like uh, here in the viewport. So 
So there's a lot more buildings. We're now doing columns and slabs. So it's, you know, it's a little, definitely more work and it would be great to throw this on a farm uh, if we could, but for now, it's still not complex enough to worry about. This is coming across pretty good. And there we go. So now we've got this much more complex city uh, with a lot more detail than we had before. The city core is where we set it up in the corner there, and it's pretty much good to go. And, you know, the, the core isn't as tall as we'd like, so maybe we multiply that by a different value. Might make, make sense to do 100, so we'll get a more prominent city core there. And this is one of the nice things about working with PDG is you can quickly evaluate what you've done, recook the system, and get the results that you need. So good for iterating, good for exploring different options, and allowing a smaller system to achieve more. So once we finish here, we should see a much more prominent city core uh, in the corner of the park. And of course, if we wanted to, we could bring back the wedging for the core location, try different options, wedge them, do different renders. But for now, we'll just do the one. So there we go. The core is much more prominent now um, using, using the higher value in the system above. So the next thing we want to do is we want to render. So let's go to do the image magic thing. And we're going to cook this. And just thinking about it, thinking about it. And we're going to get an error. And the error, why are we getting an error? Well, I had changed to the work item viewer to see it in the viewport, but we're rendering now. So we should be turning the work item viewers off and actually turning on the render viewers. And that will give me the result that we need there. So dirty and cook that. And we should be in much better shape with the uh, there. Save and continue. And Okay, so now we say let's see, view the output and oh, we're only looking at part of the image and that's because we forgot to check the camera when we were setting things up. So we look through cam one, uh, we're going to have to set up these viewers here and we're probably going to need to adjust where the camera goes. So forgot to do that. So if we lock that, we can zoom out and say let's look at the, the city from further away, maybe to angle it down a little bit and try to fill up the frame as much as possible. So I always got to remember these little details. And of course, if I was to dirty and cook, uh, I'm actually going to get an error again because the work item viewers are on. And so even though I have the render viewer on, it doesn't want to see the work item viewer. So it's important when I go to do these that we actually clean that up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to over keep the camera resolution. That's one of the things we want to do. And then the next thing we want to do is keep the render ones and get rid of the work item viewers. And that will give us a better result. Now if we go and render that and cook it, we should get what we want. So sometimes little things happen along the way. We don't get exactly what we want, but it's usually just a matter of understanding the system that we've set up and understanding what we need to do to make that work. And there it processes through. That went much better this time because it no errors. And there's the rendering of the final result. Thanks for joining us on this lesson.